From an early age on, I was told as a young black boy, if you see white people walking down the sidewalk, especially if it's a man, you step off to the side and drop your head until he passed by, because if you didn't, he might consider that to be disrespectful, and he might hit you, he might kick you, he might beat you. My grandfather, he would take me with him downtown Hattiesburg to, to pay bills. And I remember my grandfather wore a straw hat with this colorful blue band around the, the, the hat. And as a white person approached us on the sidewalk or crosswalk, he would tip his hat in what I would call an extra show of deference. And by the time my grandfather and I reached back to his house, we had bowed so many times to, to white people. They taught young kids like myself how to play the role of that second-class citizen. There are a lot of phonies who will stand up and tell you that, oh, well, all are equal in the eyes of God. How silly can you get? Christ himself was the greatest teacher of segregation. Mississippi really stood like an island of resistance. There were only 6.7% of blacks were registered to vote prior to Freedom Summer, compared to 50, 60, or 70% in other southern states. Most of the rest of America didn't seem to care, and that's what Freedom Summer was about. If we bring white students and black students from all over the country, then everyone will pay attention to Mississippi. We'll bring America to Mississippi, because America is not paying attention to Mississippi. In the 50s and 60s, particularly in the old plantation agricultural areas of the state, African Americans made up at least half, and in some cases, 70 or 80 percent of the population. And in some counties, of course, there was a realistic understanding that uh, if black people voted, they probably would be electing black officials. A lot of white people thought that African Americans in the South would literally take over and white people would have to move. They would have to get out of the state. I was born in Mississippi, and I'm the product of the society in which I was raised. And I have a vested interest in that society, and I, along with a million other white Mississippians, will do everything in our power to protect that vested interest. There was no Ku Klux Klan in Mississippi during this early period. There wasn't any need for one. The Citizens Council was doing everything that the Ku Klux Klan would have done. There were a lot of prominent people who were members, businessmen, bankers, lawyers, politicians. I joined it because I believed in what they were doing and I believed in trying to preserve the society in which we live. This is the Citizens Council Forum, the American viewpoint with a southern accent. The Citizens Council was really running the state of Mississippi. It was part of the whole apparatus of, of a white supremacist society, that you had the local police, you had the registrar, you had everyone involved in uh, the Citizens Council. They succeeded in preventing almost all blacks who attempted to register from registering to vote. Political participation was something reserved for whites. And if blacks sought it, they could get hurt in lots of different ways, ranging from economic reprisals, loss of jobs, or if you had a business, uh, uh, restrictions or being placed on your business, or if you had a loan, your loan being called in. 